This is a short response correction video to a comment made in the February 17, 2009 video Chemical Romance by Keiko Productions. Depicted in the background, we see two unattached entities A and B, shown to the left, which could be two atoms, two molecules, or two people, and one attached or bonded entity AB, shown to the right, transformed through the process of what is called a chemical reaction, signified by the reaction arrow. The total set of symbols being defined by what is called a chemical equation. In the mentioned video, after digressions on the 1995 sweaty t-shirt study, which showed that humans are most sexually attracted to those individuals with the more dissimilar immune system, in the 1980 chocolate theory of love, which to note was a theory started by American psychiatrist Michael Leibowitz, author of the 1983 book, The Chemistry of Love, the video goes on to cite Chinese chemical engineer Anthony Fung at Shantou University as one who does not believe that love can be boiled down to an equation. Actually, this is a, uh, a myth. It's a myth, okay? It is not true. The reason why is as follows. One of them, if it is really is the chemicals, and based on what we observe about love, right? In conclusion to this video, the commentator declares, science today cannot give us an exact chemical equation to what love is, or even tell us if one exists. The correction to this erroneous statement is that not only has science given us the equation to what love is, but it did so nearly two centuries ago. To go through an example, one used in particular by German polymath Johann von Goethe in 1809, suppose a man, shown top left, is in a tepid relationship with a woman, shown bottom left. The pair exists in a state of a marriage attachment signified by the bonding bracket, albeit one in which the extent of their relationship has nearly burned out, and they are more so defined as friends or as cohabitants living parallel lives rather than as in a warmly connected union. In this context, the second woman, shown below right, is introduced into the system in a connective way. As the reaction proceeds, the man simultaneously displaces his wife and falls in love with the second woman. This reaction depiction to note is done in the 1757 reaction diagram style of Scottish chemist William Cullen, the originator of the chemical reaction diagram. The reaction arrow, or dart, as Cullen called them, shows the elective affinity preference, labeled in such a manner that if the couple is put into the system containing a second female, the male will have no choice but to elect to bond a female to, thereby displacing female one in the process. We can now ask, is there an equation that quantitatively measures the changes in love involved in this process? The answer is yes, as we will discuss. The inquisitive reader to note is referred to chapter 4 of Goethe's novella, Elective Affinities, where the characters discuss these very same affinity reaction processes possibly happening among themselves as their behaviors compared to inanimate chemical behaviors and the repercussions related to fate or free will and love in the context of choice. Further discussion on this issue can also be found in the works of German science historian Jeremy Adler, who did his 1969 PhD dissertation on this topic. The word choice here to note is a modern conundrum. The question of, is love a choice, is one of the most queried search terms at Google, producing some 200 million results. Referring to our diagram, we may ask, did the man choose to leave his wife and to fall in love with another woman, or was he forced to leave? Statistically, to clarify, some 43% of couples will divorce at 15 years. On the question of choice, in the context of human mental functioning, wherein one actively recognizes the act of each choice, the riddle seems paradoxical. Yet suppose we diagram the same reaction between the bonded unit of oxygen and hydrogen in the state of existence of a water molecule, wherein into the system we introduce one sodium atom. The modern stoichiometrically correct version of this reaction is shown below, where two sodium atoms react with two water molecules forming two units of sodium hydroxide displacing one unit of hydrogen gas into the atmosphere. Both reactions show that oxygen has a stronger affinity preference for sodium than for hydrogen and will actively displace the latter and bond with the former when the three are in proximity. This reaction is in fact very explosive. It is quite obvious that oxygen does not choose to react or fall in love with sodium over that of hydrogen. Rather, it is forced to react, and the force is the electromagnetic force. 
one of the four fundamental forces of the universe, the mechanisms of which can be utter, understood in terms of quantum mechanical geometrics. And jumping to the conclusion, the name of this election preference existing between atoms, molecules, humans, or otherwise is called chemical affinity, and its measurement is called free energy, a fact deduced near the end of the 19th century by those as German physicist Hermann Hemholtz, German chemist Walter Nernst, Belgian chemist Theophil de Donder, and American physical chemist Gilbert Lewis, among, among others. To quote from the 1893 textbook Theoretical Chemistry from the Standpoint of Avogadro's Rule and Thermodynamics by German chemist Walter Nernst, winner of the 1920 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work in calculating the affinities of reactions, we find an excellent description of the relation between affinity and free energy. Since every chemical process, like every process of nature, can only advance without the introduction of external energy, only in the sense in which it can perform work, and since also, for a measure of the chemical affinity, we must presuppose the absolute condition that every process must complete itself in the sense of the affinity. On this basis, we may without suspicion regard the maximal external work of the chemical process, i.e. the change of the free energy, as the measure of affinity. Therefore, the clearly defined problem of thermal chemistry is to measure the amounts of the changes of free energy associated with chemical processes with the greatest accuracy possible. When this problem shall be solved, then it will be possible to predict whether or not a reaction can complete itself under the respective conditions. All reactions advance only in the sense of a diminution of free energy, that is, only in the sense of the affinity. To clarify, for those who may naively argue that this statement does not apply to them, it is a commonly known fact that 65% of people agree that love is a chemical reaction. As found in the 1936 book, Thermodynamic Theory of Affinity, by Belgian chemist Theophil de Donder, we have the following expression for the measure of affinity for reactions occurring at constant pressure and temperature, as do human chemical reactions. This expression shows that the affinity preferences between the reactants at constant pressure and temperature is equal to the negative of the partial of the Gibbs free energy per change in the extent of the reaction. In simplified form, this affinity expression can be defined as follows, where the affinity of the reaction is equal to the quantity of the temperature of the system times the change in the entropy, less the difference in the change in the enthalpy of the reaction. Loosely, enthalpy, or delta H, refers to the heat content of the reaction with connection to volume changes in the system. Delta S, or entropy, refers to changes in the ordering effects of the system related or connected to the work that the molecules of the system do on each other. This equation, as is found in all modern chemistry textbooks, which predicts the feasibility of chemical reactions, is the putative equation of love. In layperson's terms, physical beauty correlates to the physical heat of passion, or changes in enthalpy, in a crude sense. The way the lives of the two people reacting fit together or diverge refers to changes in entropy, and the balancing of these two types of energies determines the measure of true love and the extent to which two entities are meant to react together. It was originally argued by French chemist Marcialin Berthelot in the 1860s to note that the heat of the reaction would be the true measure of the affinity. This hypothesis, however, was later shown to be fallacious in that according to the second law of thermodynamics developed in the 1850s, there is also what is called an entropy effect to be found in all chemical reactions. In a sense, in human reaction terms, one can be physically hot for someone, yet the relationship or reaction process may not proceed or work if too much energy is dissipated by way of internal strife, such as in heated argument or through misalignments, for example, differing, differing personality types in the union of the two lights. Many simplifications were left out of this video, such as discussions on free energy coupling effects as occurs in arranged marriages or external forces affecting relationship, such as if a man loses his job, whereas and after his wife has a greater tendency to leave him, and other issues, such as gravitational effects. In conclusion, the equation of love does exist, and is to be found in the study of free energies.